All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is our deuce technique. So as a deuce defender, what do we do? As a deuce defender, what do we do? Okay. The first thing we want to talk about as a deuce defender is our alignment. Okay. We want to be eye to eye or tight on the player, the offensive player inside of us. So whether I'm a three technique, okay, or I'm a defensive end, okay, and a five, a tight five, I want to line up eye to eye. Okay. I still want my near hand down. Okay, I still want my near hand down to whatever side. Um, if I'm on the left side, right, then I'm going to have my left hand. If, I, if I'm the offensive player's on my left, I'm going to have my left hand down. If the offensive player's on my right, I'm going to have my right hand down. Now, stance-wise, okay, I want to make sure that I have a fairly even stance. I want to have a very fairly even stance, okay? So my feet, my feet should be fairly even from one another. They shouldn't be overly staggered. Okay, they shouldn't be overly staggered. Okay. I wanna be I wanna have more weight about 60-40 on my feet and less weight on my hands. More weight on my feet than my hands. Okay. Whereas as a jet defender I wanna have about 60-40, 70-30 on my hands. Okay. As a deuce defender I want about 60-40 on my feet. As a deuce defender I'm reading my key Sorry, my key. Is the offensive player, so offensive lineman. My key is the offensive lineman. My key is not the ball. I don't key off the ball. I key off the player. Okay, so if I'm this end, I'm going to key off the tackle. If I'm the tackle, I'm going to key off the guard. Okay. Key off the offensive line. My first responsibility as a deuce defender is get it, my hands on the offensive line. My hands on the offensive line. That's the first thing I want to do. Okay? So I'm going to step my inside foot. Okay? Punch and lock out. And I want to try to get my, my hands on his inside breastplate. I want my far hand on his inside breastplate underneath his armpit. I want my near hand through his shoulder. Uh, through his chest, okay? Through his chest. We want to do what's called go screw to screw, screw to screw with the offensive lineman. So if I'm shaded to the right, okay, I'm going to step my inside foot, press and lock out. I want to have my inside hand on his inside breastplate, okay? And I want to have my outside hand right through his sternum, and I want to be screw to screw. So I want to be right eye to eye with the guy, okay? Head up with him. Alright? We're going to start to pound him vertically back. Okay? So we're going to get screw to screw we're going to start to pound him like an offensive lineman would. We have the gap inside of us. So we have in this case the B gap. A deuce defender always has the gap inside of him. That is my gap. That's my responsibility. So my responsibility is not the C gap. Okay, it's not the gap outside of me. It is always the gap inside of me. Okay? I have the gap inside of me. So for my tackle, I have the A gap. That's my primary gap. If I'm the end, I have the B gap. That's my primary gap. Alright? This is not a stunt. I cannot say that enough that this is not a stunt. I'm not stunting into the gap. Okay, I'm getting screw to screw, pressing and locking out and starting to pound that offensive line vertically. Okay. I'm going to probably end up on his inside half on most blocks. Okay. Once the ball carry declares, all right, or what once I recognize where the ball is, then I'll dip and rip and get in the get get in my gap. Get in my gap. Okay, but my responsibility is the gap inside of me. I am not a true two-gap player. I am not two-gapping. It's a misnomer. Okay, even though we may call it a two-gap assignment, okay, as a deuce defender, I have the gap inside of me. Okay, that is my gap. I cannot stress that enough. All right. Now, let's talk about how we play our big five. The down block, I'm going to bend and chase. 
Ben and Chase. What does that mean? That means on a down, I got my hands on, I'm going to bend, I'm going to turn my shoulders. That's why we call it bend. So I'm here, boom, press and lock out. He gives me the down. Bend and chase. I take my far hand, the one that would go through his sternum normally, and I'm going to put it into the nap of his hip. I'm going to put it in his hip. That gets me low. That keeps me low. If I try to put it in the middle of his back or, the, or put it in the nap of his neck, you get too high. We call this a spine technique. We call this a spine technique. I want to get it in his hip, not his spine, not his neck. Okay? So he, he comes on the down block, right? I go to bend and chase. I put my hand on the nap of his hip, my other hand. We long arm and extend this hand. So we long arm the near hand, the near arm. We're trying to hold on and grab the offensive lineman. Okay, so we're using a long arm technique. We're trying to hold on and grab the offensive lineman. Okay, so I'm here. I go to punch and lock out. I'm bending and chasing. I try to grab the offensive lineman as I bend and chase. Okay, and, and put my hand on the nap of his hip. I'm going to wrong arm any pullers. Wrong arm any pullers. Again, we attack his inside thigh board. Okay, we want to go right through his crotch with our with our arm. All right, and we want to try to spill the ball. Whenever we wrong arm a puller, we need to run the circle to try to make the play from the back side. We do not want to cross face of the puller. What do I mean by that? If a puller comes, I go wrong arm him. Boom. Okay? I wrong arm him right there. I do not want to go back out where I came. I don't want to turn back out where I came because I need to stay in the inside gap. I need to stay in this gap right here. So I will now run the circle, literally run a circle, okay, and go out the back door to try to make the play. Do not let him cross back over the top of the pole when you are wrong arming. You need to run the circle. All right? So again, I get a down block, I'm going to bend and chase. I'm going to bend and chase. If it were to be zone read, if I'm a bend and chase player, I have the dive. So I'm a deuce defender, I get a down block, I'm going to take the dive. I'll take the dive, whoever the dive player is. That could be a running back. That could be a quarterback. I take the dive. I don't take the quarterback or the pitch. Say, so I don't take the pitch. I don't take the guy running on the perimeter. Okay? I take the dive. I come down and take the dive. Okay? If I get a base block, I get a base block. I want to get my helmet screw to screw. I want to get screw to screw on the offensive lineman, pound him back vertically. Okay? I want to start to get my helmet on his inside shoulder. His inside shoulder, inside hip. Staying low. Okay? I don't want my helmet on his outside half. I want to keep it on his inside half. Okay? When the, either the ball declares or we found out where the ball's going, I'll dip, rip, get, stay in my B gap. Okay? Stay in my inside gap. Stay in my inside gap. So, again, I'm going to pound him. Once the ball declares in the, that it's going through the B, I'll dip, rip, play the B gap. I do not have any C gap responsibility. I have no responsibility outside of me. So, if I'm a tackle and I'm an A gap player, because I'm deucing, I do not have any B-gap responsibility. No B-gap responsibility. No B-gap responsibility. I have the gap inside of me. I cannot stress that enough. This is not a true two-gap technique. We do not have both gaps. Okay? If you play it that way, you got to play your linebackers different. you got to play your linebacker keys and reads different. Okay? So we are not a, two, a true two-gap defender. Okay? So again, I'll press and lock out, start to pound the offensive lineman on my insteps, okay, keep my helmet inside, dip, rip, or chop, play inside on the ball carrier.
A reach. A reach. I always let myself get reached by the first offensive lineman because I have the gap inside of me. So the tackle's going to reach me. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the tackle reaching me. Boom. Now we got to do what we call a ricochet. Can't spell it correctly, I apologize. But ricochet technique. We want to ricochet. You want to ricochet off of the adjacent offensive lineman because I can't let the guard reach me. Right? So we ricochet. So if I'm coming down, boom, he's coming to reach me. I want to kick my hat and hands and I want to attack him. Press and lock out. And now we need to run, okay, towards wherever the reach is coming from. So if the reach is coming from my left, I'm here, boom, press and lock out. I need to run away from the reach on the guard. Boom, dip, rip, run. Dip, rip, run. I cannot let the guard reach me. I need to ricochet. The tackle is going to reach me. That's okay. Okay, we call this a ricochet technique. A ricochet. I'm going to try to ri ri oh, shit, That's not correct. I'm sorry. But that's okay. Pound. Okay. Pass. Okay. All I need to do is make sure we balance the rush. You're not going to have an overwhelming pass rush as a deuce defender. Okay, your pass rush is not going to be that great as a deuce defender. The only thing I need to make sure I do is balance the rush. What do I mean by that? If I'm a deuce defender, I'm an end, and I go here in the B gap, and it's pass, I need to balance and get back outside to contain the quarterback. Okay, on the rush. I don't, I, I'm not going to be overly effective with my pass rush. I just need to keep contain on the quarterback. If I'm a three technique, okay, let's say I'm a three technique, and I do, a lot of times what will happen is he'll start to cross face, and he'll be in the opposite A. I can't do that. I just need to understand that I need to stay in the strong side A or B gap on my pass rush. I need to stay in the strong side A or B gap on my pass rush. I cannot, okay, Cross the center space into the opposite A. Okay, so you're not going to get a big um, pass rush out of your deuce defenders. Pull. Okay, pull. On a pull. Okay, on a pull, I want to bend and chase. On a pull, I want to bend and chase. Okay, we do something called a U-turn. So, if the puller comes, on a bone, he comes to me, I want to bend and chase and turn. Run the U, okay? U-turn. Don't cross face. We don't cross face. Okay, the reason we don't cross face is because I want my linebackers to be able to play fast. If you cross face, now your, your linebackers have to play off of your tackles. We don't want that to happen. We want our tackles, our defensive linemen to stay fit in their gaps and let our linebackers be the fast players. Okay, if you're going to cross face, if you're going to cross face with the tackles, with the interior D linemen, which is an option. If you're going to do it, then you have to slow down the linebacker to wherever the side, the down block comes from in the pull. So if the center block's back, this linebacker has to play off the backside hip of the tackle. He cannot scrape right now. He can't be fast. He has to be slow. Because your tackle's going to cross his face, which means that if you have them both playing fast, you have no one for the backside AB gap. Okay. You have to play him slow if you're going to cross face. If you're going to bend and chase it like we do and you turn, then you can play the linebacker fast.
All right, so that's how we play our big five, pass down, base, reach, and pull, okay, as a deuce defender.